Hi everyone, Steve Harris here and welcome to Without Code. I'm very excited to show you around our new email hosting system, which will allow you to set up custom branded email addresses for your business or clients. In this video, I'll walk you through how to add your domain to our email system, set up new inboxes and access our webmail to send email from any browser or location. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is jump over to my Without Code account and within the hamburger menu in the top right, we now have an option called My Email. So let's click on that. This takes us to our email dashboard. And as you can see, I have a message here saying no email domains have been added. So in order to set up a branded email address for your business or your customer, the first thing we need to do is click Add Email Domain. Once I click that option, you'll see we have a pop-up that tells us to enter our email domain in and we need to enter it without the www dot included, and we need to make sure we include the full domain extension, so .com or .ca. I'm going to enter my domain here, which is graphics.ninja, and click Activate Domain. Once I do that, our system will check and see if this domain is available for email hosting, which it is. There's a message here telling us so. And then we click Complete Activation. The next step is to purchase an email plan based on the number of inboxes you need. In this case, I'm going to need up to five inboxes, so let's just click five mailboxes, which is $10 a month. Now something to note here is all of these plans are billed annually. The reason we've done this is to make it simple for you to have one bill for your client and to not have to track individual mailboxes with different billing and renewal terms. You now have one plan associated to that client billed once per year. So let's click select plan. It comes up with our payment info and let's complete our payment. Okay, I've successfully paid for our email hosting plan and now I can add up to five inboxes for my domain graphics.ninja. Within this box, you can see we have a thank you message as well as email activation instructions. And what this is telling us is we need to add a couple of entries to our domain or rather our DNS. These are the entries that are going to tell our domain where to send and receive email from. And without these entries, your email will not work properly. So it's important to put these entries in right away and accurately. Now, something important to note, you do not need to leave this window open. We have downloadable instructions here. So if I click on that, it will open a PDF that includes all of our domain instructions. As well, we have these available in another location within your account, so you don't need to keep this window open. So I'm actually going to just close this window, and you can see that our dashboard will refresh, and it now says graphics.ninja, and we can add mailboxes to this domain. I'm gonna go ahead and set up those DNS entries on my domain before I add any mailboxes because they're not going to work without them. Of course, I can reference back to that PDF I downloaded, or if I click this gear icon, which is the domain settings, it will pull up a window and we can select email activation instructions. And within there, we have the same entries. So let me pop over to my domain manager. In this case, it is managed by GoDaddy. As you can see, it's the DNS manager for graphics.ninja. And let's go ahead and add these entries. The first entry that we're going to add is a CNAME record just like you do when you set up a site on Without Code. The host is mail, and the address it points to is this kind of long string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this long string, starting at the mail.graphics.ninja. Let's go back to GoDaddy, and let's click Add a Record. Type is going to be CNAME. The host is mail, and it points to that long address that I copied. So I'll paste that in there, and we can leave time to live at one hour or less is fine and click save. Okay, one of our entries is done. Let's look at entry number two. This is an MX entry, which is used specifically for mail. So MX, the host is an at symbol or we're going to leave it blank and it points to this long address. So again, let's copy the long address, head back to our domain manager, click add. The type is going to be an MX record the host is going to be an at symbol, or again, we could leave it blank depending on your registrar. And points to is going to be that long string that we copied before. Next, we have a priority setting. On our instructions, priority is set to zero, which means it's the first priority. 
And then the time to live can be an hour or less. So priority zero, time to live, one hour is fine, and click save. Okay, we've now added our DNS entries. They can take some time to propagate, but let's go ahead and set up some mailboxes within our account. And once everything is propagated, our email should be working perfectly. So let's head back to our without code account and I'm going to close this window. Next, let's click add mailbox. This is where we'll add the individual users to our email domain. So first up is our account name. That's the name of the sender of the email. So I'm going to do Steve, and that'll be Steve at graphics.ninja. Password, we can enter anything we want, but it says it must be eight characters, contain one uppercase, lowercase, and one number. Something important to note with your password is if you are creating addresses for your clients or customers, you may just want to enter a temporary password into this box and encourage them to change it after so they have something unique and their email cannot be accessed by you as the designer. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter a temporary password in this field. Okay, my passwords are entered and they match. Next up, type of mailbox. We have two options. We have a standard mailbox or a forward only mailbox. A standard mailbox allows us to have complete email functionality so we can send and receive email from it. The next option we have is a forward only address and that means that all mail will be forwarded to another account automatically. People frequently use this when they want to send email from a Gmail address. So you would create a forward only account and then it will send everything to the Gmail address you enter and you can use that then to send email. I'm going to set this up as a standard inbox and let's click add mailbox. Okay, it said our account was added successfully and you can see now we have steve at graphics.ninja added. It's a standard mailbox and we have some actions here which is just to delete the inbox. Okay, now that that inbox is created, let's check it out. And the way that we can do that is by going to our webmail client. So let's click open webmail. As you can see here, our webmail is completely unbranded, so it does not have any sort of without code branding on it. You can provide this to your customers and clients and they will not know who you hosted the webmail through or where it was built. So let's go ahead and enter my email address and the password that was used when we created the account. And then we have options to ensure that the account does not stay logged in if this is a public computer or if we want to retain our login state if this is your private computer. So let's click log in. And there you can see our webmail has loaded. Now this is a modern webmail system based on Roundcube, which is a very popular open source webmail client. It's updated frequently and I think that you're going to love the functionality included here. So I'll give you a quick tour around the webmail system, but one thing I'd like to point out that's very important is if we go into our settings tab right away, you'll see that we have password and password recovery. Let's click password recovery. Within this area, we can set a recovery password or phone number so that if we lose our password, it can send a reset link to another email address. So if I just click email, it asks us to enter an external email that will be used as a reset and enter your current password and click save. Then we can get back in our email without our administrator needing to reset the password. Okay, let's have a quick look around the webmail client. So on the left side, we have some major kind of high level options. We have compose, so clicking that of course will allow you to create a new message. One thing to note here is the attachment size in our email system is quite large. It's 27 megabytes. However, we do not recommend sending attachments that large because you never know what your receiving address can accept as well. So we have all of the standard email options within this area. I'm going to close out of here and let's just go back to our mailbox. I'll discard that. We also have our contacts area on the left side where we can create and store all of our contacts. We have an RSS system for adding in RSS feeds and reading RSS. We have a files option. The files option allows you to upload larger files that will count towards your five gigabyte account limit. And then you can share those files via URL. We also have a calendar system. And lastly, you have your settings. And I encourage you to look through the settings because there's quite a bit of options for how your email is going to be displayed. And within here, you can also set things like autoresponders, some spam settings, and any forwarding options you may want to use. If you did set up your email as forwarding only, this is where you're going to want to go to set up the forwarding system to a Gmail or another account. 
So that's a quick look at our webmail system. I'm going to click log out. Let's jump back into our account here. And let's say I wanted to set my email up using Outlook or Apple's Mail. The way that we would do that is we go into our domain settings. And the third tab here is POP and IMAP settings. These are the standard settings you'll need to enter into any email client. So you can use either IMAP or POP3. We recommend IMAP because it's easier to sync your email across all of your devices. And then we just have all the standard options. So the server host name, the port you'll need to set up, or rather just use or select in your email client. SSL is required, and then you'll just need to enter your email address and password. You've probably seen all these options before if you set up your email on your mobile device or computer. And if you do get stuck or need help, check out our documentation area, which is linked here. We have created documentation for configuring email clients. And if I open up this article, you can see that we have various guides for popular clients, such as Outlook, Mac Mail, iOS, Windows, Android, or Thunderbird. Jumping back to our email dashboard, everything's set up, our mailbox has been made, our DNS entries have been made, and everything's looking good. So our inbox should be sending and receiving email perfectly by now or very shortly once the DNS propagates. A couple of other options to be aware of. Within the gear icon here, we have an option to suspend. What this will do is suspend email across this entire domain. So it will not delete them, but rather users won't be able to log in and they won't be able to send or receive any emails. You can suspend addresses and then turn them back on as needed. And of course, we have an option to delete the mailbox or delete the entire account. It also shows the subscription ID that is associated to this inbox. And if I click on that, it will bring us right to our accounts page where you can see that we have graphics.ninja, we have an email five inbox plan enabled, and we have our billing information available. So we can cancel our auto renewal or subscription there. I hope you enjoy using our brand new email system. Now, something we've done by design is disconnected email hosting from website hosting. Often it's combined depending on who you're using for hosting. However, we felt that it was important for your clients to have flexibility and not have the two explicitly tied together. Now, if your clients decide to host their website somewhere else or use a different builder, they do not have to go through the trouble of moving their email as well. They can leave it hosted at Without Code. Thanks again for supporting Without Code, and we'd love to hear your feedback to make the email hosting system even better.